That's not Katie. It's not, no. Uh, you're slightly taller as well. I feel weird actually standing beside you. Yeah, I did that. Like Should have got your wig as well, Rob. Yeah. Uh, this is Robert. Uh, so a lot of you would have met Robert over the time, but it, probably Hello. everybody's spoken to him on the phone. He isn't a British Airways pilot. No. Just want to make that clear? Not today. No. Not today, no. No, that's it. Yeah, you've thought you'd branch out and yes. you'd talk about whiskey. You love whiskey. I do. That's how you came to work here. You, we couldn't get rid of you. You used to just call in. Yeah. You were working somewhere else. Basically, I, I camped outside and eventually did let me sleep inside. So that's that's how I got yeah. here. Yeah, we, we give you a job. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. you pay me in whiskey. Uh, yeah, reluctantly. Um, we were sort of having a look at myself and yourself. We're here looking at the, at the racks and sort of saying what we're going to talk about. And uh, as I said, there is a lot of scotch in. We're going to kick it to tomorrow and that. Yes. But there's a lot of legacy Irish stuff. And, and look, that's what most of what we do is is legacy Irish whiskey. Modern whiskey as well. But I mean, the, the, the hard to find bottles. The lads there just beside your arm, they've been doing really well lately, haven't they? Yeah, fantastic. And uh, look, they're not making any more of these. Uh, definitely probably not to the same sort of presentation. No. Like, look at that. Yeah, look at that. It's gorgeous. You know? Yeah, it really is. Gorgeous. Like it, it's a heavy box. It's yeah. not a light piece of equipment either. You know. So that's the two thousand and seven one. It, there's a bit of blurriness in all of this. Yeah. There is so many of them. Not so many of them. There's oh seven. There's oh nine. 09 there's 15. fifteen. We did see recently an O four one. Was that uh, something? Is it ninety four? Ninety four. South African. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, that's the sort Which of stuff that is just impossible. Yeah, you, impossible. You somebody, somebody did, but find one. Uh, but uh, like, it's weird that that the two thousand and seven. There's the two versions of it. There's yeah. the red wooden box, so. uh, and then that the carbon fiber box as well. Um, they're really pretty, Rob, aren't they? Yeah, they are. The, uh, uh, 2007 uh, is the only one with the, the year on the front. Yeah. I think the rest are on the back. 09 has it on the bottle, doesn't it? Ooh, 09, 09, 09 I think, has that on the bottle. Um, that's 2007 as well. So. Uh, yeah, that's one. <laughs> you could have just looked at the outside of the box. So when it says 2007 edition. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. See, uh, yeah, Katie, at least Katie can read. <laughs> um, <laughs> beside that, we have... Speaking of being able to read and write. Being able to read and write, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this one is a, an oddity. Yes. Such an oddity. Yeah. So this is the Caden Heads release uh, from Bro Street, but it was from somebody called Jamie Sons. Jamie Sons, yeah. Jamie Sons. Yeah, there you go. Right in on it. Uh, a bit of a boo-boo, 750 mil, distilled in 1963, so it is old Bow Street distillate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's in cracking condition, in really, really good condition. Yeah. Caden Heads have built that reputation now as being sort of yeah. the, the... They don't miss. No, no, they the curator miss. of some fantastic whiskies. Um, it has these orange boxes. There's a, a Tullamore Dew one, a daily a Tullamore yeah. Dew one, or a Tullamore Dew one. Uh, and again, it would have been back to old legacy stuff. But uh, Dave, the last couple of times we've sold them bottles, mm. they've done really, really well. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, beside it is, speaking of hits or misses. Yeah, absolutely. Brown Label Jemson, John Jemson, 12-year-old special old Irish whiskey. Um, no, uh, as the Brown Label. As the Brown Label because it'll probably give you brown treasures afterwards. Um, this one's the Japanese uh, release on it. A lot of them would have went out yeah. there. Uh, Japan was is was and is a massive market for uh, Jemson. Uh, and a lot of these special editions went out there. Uh, I've seen them in various different yeah. uh, conditions. Yeah. Uh, uh, you tend to see a lot more 15s. Yeah. For some reason. We've had them in the boxes. In the brown boxes. boxes. Yeah, the gold sort of um, distillate wise. Beside that, you have Green Spot. <laughs> just, just leave that there. Yeah, yeah, just leave that there. Um, green, green Spot. <laughs> Lovely whiskey. Lovely whiskey. Um, <laughs> not like <laughs> brown leather. Um, green Spot. Um, this is the Bicentennial. Yes. Um, 200 years of uh, Mitchell's. Uh, again, uh, the, the box presentation box was done by the second class in Sun Column Kills uh, Woodworking. There it is. Um, <laughs> Is that not right? Is that not what I'm supposed to say? I think the younger members of the Mitchell family. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a school project. School project. And yeah. uh, they made up these. But what it has inside is very limited edition. 
Um, there's only 200 bottles of it, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do come up. They always go a great price. They do. Yeah. You have the other one, which is the the 12, 10 year old. Yeah. Uh, and again, it does a cracking price as well. But those twelves are particularly good. Yeah. That comes with a wee uh, book explaining all about it. It's got the numbered release on it, uh, one hundred and eighty-seven of two hundred. But again, that is a nice one to have. And any any uh, red breast collector, you can put it down the bottom. There's usually a bit of a fight over the red breast green spot. Yeah. There's usually a bit of a fight over them. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have been lucky enough to taste that. There is a few bars. I think um, open. Yeah, I think Bose has a bottle of it open, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And I think uh, the Palace, Willie in the Palace has a bottle of it open. Ooh. Um, I, it's not cheap. But again, it is what it is. It's, it's not it's, cheap. It, yeah, it's not as cheap as a bottle, so buy the bottle and see where it goes. Two hundred bottles. Um, Green Spot, the screw caps, um, yes. they always do well. They come in various different conditions to us. That one's all right. Look, it's, it's, it's got a bit of wear and tear. It's all right. It's got a bit of love um, to it, as you know, I suppose is the easy way to say it. But it is, you know, ideally it's, other than that, it's just a little bit of wear and tear. The Irish Whiskey Society, Brian Green, uh, about a year ago, I think, done a tasting with them. Yeah. And uh, I know Brian gave me a resample of that. And it is it is early green spot. It is, you, you can tell, there is a great evolution in from where it was then to where it is now. And I suppose that's yes. just the, the, the whiskey itself. It's just evolved. It's also a 200 mil bottle of this in this one. Sort of. Is it? Yeah, just okay. put it up, so it'll cool. be there shortly. Okay, cool. Uh, beside it, speaking of 200 mil bottles, yeah. haven't seen many of them. No, I've seen one large, one or two large yeah. of the bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It didn't, uh, uh, am I speaking out of it didn't uh, go for a while, it discontinued shortly. The gin? Yeah. yeah, 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 just never, never, never. There was a sort of thing that we were trying and it just didn't work. Yeah. Uh, I know that it had a uniqueness that... And I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say this. I think the Pierce Lions team, so it would be Michael Carr and them, yeah. have tried to replicate the taste as much as possible with their gin. The Hapney gin. Oh, okay. Yeah, as a Dublin gin. Ah, okay, I get that then. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So okay. that's that's what that was. Um you're right, it was it was a, a limited release, it wasn't a limited edition per se, but it was something that they tried and it just didn't get the, the traction that they thought it would. Look, and I suppose back in the day, you could be in the cork dry gin and God knows yeah, what yeah, else. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, that was it. And and that was the sort of weirdness of it. Like yeah. I mean, they had the cork dry gin and then they had that as well. Beside that, uh, Legacies is one of the things that we, we always talk about here and what Legacy whiskies. I, you sort of, that's, people go, oh, well, that's just a gold label. It's just a, a, mm. a gold label 12. You're covering the important part. Millennium edition. These went ballistic, and I mean ballistic, yes. in the early days, in our oh, early yeah. days of Irish whiskey auctions. Uh, the prices that was being bandied around, one on, on another auction site went for 1,400 quid. Yeah, I think it was around that figure. Yeah, uh, it was uh, just bananas. People ask us how these things happen. Now. Yeah. We don't know. No, no. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's but when you think about that, that's now 23 years ago. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, like, the passage of time just doesn't stop, and 23 years ago. So, is that going to be the ultimate collector's edition, you know, in 2050? Well, considering the bottle shape has changed, the new bottles... Yeah, yeah, so everything's it's got changed. the old... Yeah, yeah. Often people would say, like, the hardcore powers guys would prefer the older shape bottles sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and the uh, old gold label taste. The auction, they, they pay a premium for those bottles. Uh, absolutely. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, who knows? You know? uh, but I, I just thought I'd throw it up there because it is, as I say, it's 23 years ago now. Yeah. So what are we looking at now that was sort of the 70s, the pre-70s stuff? You know, the 80s stuff from the green spots and stuff like that. That's the collector's uh, yeah. thing. Is that where people need to be starting to think now? To go, but if you look at the growth of Irish whiskey and uh, what's predicted in, in, in the next few years and the not too distant future, this legacy stuff it doesn't exist anymore. No. There's, there's a very small amount of it in existence right now, and it's it is regularly being opened and enjoyed mm-hmm. in tastings through different festivals and God knows what else. So the level of what's available is keep dropping through the floor the entire time, but yep. the demand for Irish whiskey is going through the roof. So, so it would make sense. The new countries that's coming on board, the, the South Africa's, the yeah. Americas, the Japans, 
they're going to yeah. the collectors there are going to be going on to Irish whiskey and they're it's going to want yeah. legacy stuff they want to see they, like often collectors are a little bit they're history buffs as well so yeah. they like to dig through the past and see what came before yeah you know to understand yeah where it is now yeah right now so it makes sense why a lot of these legacy yeah. bottles would That's be right. it, it, it's one of the things and that feeds into the next row which I, I put up one of the great unknowns to me and something that I just can't fathom. Is this, are you going to talk about cool? Cool. Yeah, yeah, I knew you were going to talk about cool. I, 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 I literally cannot fathom why people don't have the love for it. It's a good time to be a coolie drinker right now because you can buy whatever you want for not much money. Yeah. And fantastic, fantastic whiskey. Yeah. Well. Like, it's it's like savagely underrated. And, 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 Here's the here's the the stuff that I, I think an awful lot of people miss. Yeah. Everything that's winning awards now. It's cool. It's either Cooley or Bushmans. Yeah. Everything that's winning awards. I know. Yeah. I mean the but stuff got that a fancy box for someone the, else's name. On. The stuff that won the world's best single malt was was came out, came out yep. through Cooley. Um, Jarrett's. The, yeah. the, the, the Absolutely. Yeah, again, another great example. <coughs> from a distillery in the, or not too far away from here. Yeah. Can't say no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, but everything that we love and taste now, and I know that that you know the likes of Dunville's and the likes of other brands are adding their, you know, putting their input into the, it and they're finishing no, it. But yeah, if the absolutely. base liquid oh, yeah. that's, was crap, that's my point. Couldn't do it. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like, they're putting their own unique DNA polish on it and it's fantastic and the amount of work that goes into sourcing barrels and the right maturation and the right sort of level of complexities and cast variations is fantastic but the base spirit has to be up to par to be able Absolutely. to do that yeah. and that's good you know? yeah. uh, and on that I mean again presentation wasn't I mean <coughs> early Cooley stuff wasn't known yeah. for its fantastic presentation yeah. I've often said John Teeling would have put it in a bucket in a cardboard box, if it if you could have got away with it, because yeah, that's just what it was. It was just a shift. Uh, and again, like Cooley in the early days, it wasn't a money maker. But even know? even this stuff wasn't didn't really no. exist, and it wasn't important. I, I mean, this is what one of five thousand five thousand bottles. Yeah. yeah, but there's a wee catch in that. If you ever look at the oh, certificate, I was that. <laughs> you ever look at the certificate. <laughs> I mean, uh, how many letters in the alphabet? I'm not great. Twenty six letters in the alphabet. So this is JL. This is JL. Was there a PQ? I don't there know. could have been, yes. <laughs> and that's the ticket. You know, I, I always said that if I was ever going to release a whiskey, it was going to be A, 1 to 10, B, oh, 1 yeah. to 10, C, 1 to 10, and everybody would be getting limited editions, and that's how the price was going to go. Yeah. There was the man that invented it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, it had this weird, you know, uh, um, uh, pure pot still, single malt, yeah. all in the same just labelling. It's just not done. You wouldn't get away with it. You wouldn't get away with it now. I mean, again, it was old legacy stuff. Does that add a little something to it? It's the story, isn't it? It is is the story. That's not even possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's one. Got a certificate. Got it in a nice wooden box with clips and everything else in it. Um, I find it interesting. It's also the Brussels. Picture of the Brussels distillery in it. Kilbegan distillery. Yeah. Let's not get the truth getting in the way of a good story. Yeah. There you go. Uh, comes a lovely signed by Mr. Teeling himself. Yeah. Um, and so that's that one. Uh, beside it, you have Connemara. Ah, yes. Everybody loves the peated whiskey now. Oh yeah, we're all we were all doing peated, and Waterford's doing it, and Barry Chandler's doing it, and Short Cross is doing it, and Sleeve League's doing it. This is one of, if not the one of the first What's the modern. Well, yeah, modern. Peats. Yeah. Nobody else was doing it. No. No. And everybody looked at them as if they're mad. Ninety. 19, well, no, the first distillate for that was 93. 92, 93 is when they ran the first uh, peated distillate. There was 91 stuff. That was yeah, and it got buried. <coughs> ah, yeah, right. Lovely. We don't talk about that. Right, okay. Uh, 57.9% cask strength, single cask, peated whiskey. I mean, Connemara, you know, the lads are now all into their PPMs and this, that, and that. That stuff just... Here's a load of peat. Yeah, yeah. yeah here's, here's, a, here's a bucket full of peat. It's, it's, and, and see I'm what not a big peat guy, but like, if yeah. I don't drink peat, I want to taste it. She's, she's meaty. You know. uh, beside that, Cooley Potching. Again, you know, everybody's yeah. talking about Potching, and, and Brendan has his new Pango release, and Potching's... Potching is the big thing. Oh, it's so fashionable. It was done before. Yeah. 
you know, again, they were way ahead. I mean, and again, it's actually not an ugly bottle. It's a pretty bottle. Uh, that's 2011, yeah. Noel Sweeney. I mean, that's literally 11, 12 years ago. Most of modern distilleries didn't exist. No, true. I mean, actually, true. none of them exist. 2012 no. was when the first one came online. Yeah, day one, yeah, basically. Yeah. So that's one of the other things that, that's a light ahead of it. I know there's bars, the likes of Dave Mulligan in Bar 1661 is always looking for that mm. because he just wants to have... It, it, it's probably not for drinking, it's more for just this is... I, know, I, th I think he does as well. Uh, it was very naked. I mean, a lot of modern potgenes were, um, are distilled to be a potgene. Yeah. That essentially this new make was... New was, that was like, yeah, 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 that's yeah, the that, difference between this sort of sort of earlier release yeah. of Pachi. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was made like whiskey but just yeah. not finished. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But it was I mean again it just shows A B V on that is it I imagine it's sixty five percent. There you go. <coughs> that's that's uh, that's that's new make. That's <laughs> meaty. Uh and then again the story goes uh legacy. Yeah. What what more legacy is and then that that John Taylor's next venture. So the, is this the firstborn, the early locks, the early uh Chir Connells is, is first born it now. I'd These say, were never for sale. I like the presentation of them. I think they were fantastic. Good and again, concept. look, uh, they, they don't make whiskey for sale. That's the, the, the thing about G&D now. The, the plan was yeah. never to make whiskey for sale. When, it was always you, to be... When you see where G&D is going to go in not too distant future again, and the investment is going into it right now, and like you could see the work going yeah, on. Yeah, like literally the office is half a mile from yeah. G&D, so... Yeah. You see it every Six day. new pots going in in the front of the building at the minute. Six new pots going in. Um, again, one of these things that most of modern liquids that we're tasting these days, yeah, I can't name them. They're probably all everybody knows who they are. But most of the modern brands that are out there that their distilleries aren't ready. Absolutely, we're drinking GND liquid. Yeah. Again, and it's it's. Great quality. The the grain whiskey. So these were three. So there's a single malt, yeah. a blended, and a single grain. Uh, they're all limited editions. There's four hundred and thirty eight grain. I think there was a thousand blends uh, three and three eight three eighty five malts. These weren't never for sale. These were given yeah. out. John was using that as a, a demo for what we can do and what we what were they going to be. These were the first distillates from it. Given out to sort of maybe staff involved, staff, VIPs, VIPs, me. You, did you get one? I may, how, may or not have got one. <laughs> there you go. Um, 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 obviously, I am a VIP. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, no uh, question about it. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Robert. That's it, yeah. I'm keeping you for another while. Um, and beside that, we've got Old Comer, 22-year-old, uh, and then beside that, Bushmills. I mean, these are proper legacy bottles. 22-year-old, Old Comer from too many of these. No. Absolutely not. No, you don't. Uh, they didn't have seals, capsules, nope. all this sort of mad stuff. That was literally probably where it was, you know, the 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 the, the dirt and everything on it. The uh, dust. We know the, the story of those bottles, so we're happy enough to list yeah, them as absolutely. well. We, we, we is, know the heritage. Uh, there of is. We verified it. We're quite happy to do it. Um, so if anyone has any questions about that bottle, give us an email. Give, we'll give you some pictures. And as I said, just beside that, the Millennium Mall. So again, distilled, a, that's a 25-year-old, that's 1975. Yes. So that was 1975, bottled in the Millennium. Yeah, so bottled in late 99. My question the other day was, surely there's casks of that left over in Bushmans that were never bottled. Yeah. That people, you know, never bottled at the time. They bought casks. Do we know what the original cask release was? Oh, well, no. There was loads. There was literally loads done. Um, and there's loads of there's, there's there's a couple of sites on on the website about yeah. you know all the different projects. Some of them are not very known casks. Two years time, that's going to be fifty year old whiskey. Yeah. So that's now forty eight year old distillate that's sitting down there in Bushmans. Yep. That they haven't done anything with. And they go for two three hundred a bottle. Yeah. If it said another brand from the south of the country in the front of it. Absolutely. Name your price. It's again great. Uh, so that's it. As I say, Robert stood in today for Katie. Uh, uh, you're not quite as pretty, so I do have to say. But does that mean I'm fired already? It's no, you're not fired. You just one. yeah, yeah. You just you won't be back. Katie, be back okay, tomorrow. Fair enough, right. You like you it. haven't got her hair right, or that's you know the matches. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk about scotch and everything else. Yeah, and as I say, we'll uh, go through it. But we're in good shape. So we'll talk to you tomorrow. Good luck. Bye.